All right, whenever you guys are ready, questions for Delaney Shell. So you end your college career with a national championship. What, what does that mean to you? Uh, yeah, this is a, it's a big one for me because I've been trying to get this title for five seasons now. Um, just every year, it kind of, it was a lot of close calls. You know, I was second two years in a row, missed out on the final my freshman year. Um, it was just a lot of close calls. So I think this one is pretty special just because we kind of figured out what worked. Appreciate the emotions or feelings of winning uh, Olympic medal compared to a national championship. Yeah, I mean, you'd think that winning a silver medal is like more emotional and I guess like a bigger thing. But for me, like this has so much history behind it because I mean, it was a lot of um, close calls. It was a lot of trial and error. And I think this one just has so much meaning behind it. So I think um, it's hard to compare, but at the same time, this one's really special to me. Were you when you first started diving or, or like what was the story behind becoming a diver? Yeah, so actually one of the divers that dove here, her name is Diamond, she actually used to be a gymnast and she, um, when I was younger, I would be around the pool all the time because my siblings swam for Ford. And so I actually saw her diving and I was kind of in this phase of, I don't think I want to do gymnastics anymore. Um, and so I saw her there diving on the club team and I went over and talked to her and kind of just told her like, look, I'm pretty burnt out of gymnastics. I think I want to try something new. And she was the one that kind of told me, you know, diving might be really good for you. And so she was someone I looked up to in gymnastics. She was one of the older girls. So um, to have her tell me that was like, all right, maybe I should listen. And so I actually gave it a, sh a shot and it was immediately like fell in love with it. Similarities between the two? Yeah. So diving is, I like to call it almost vertical gymnastics. I mean, um, the only major difference is that you are landing on your head and in gymnastics, you're taught not to do that. So I think that was the one thing that was challenging for me to figure out. Um, when I was younger, I, I would kept, you know, coming out to land on my head and then I'd flip straight over to my feet because I was taught for years to never do that. And so I think that was the one big transition, but otherwise, you know, the air awareness, um, the flipping, flexibility, strength, all of that is very, very similar. Is gymnastics a common second sport for divers? Yes, it's very common. You you do hear a lot of um, top divers being gymnasts beforehand just because gymnastics, you tend to start younger um, and diving tends to be something you try later because the training is less intense. And those, those close calls that you said, um, you know, you had a a very successful college career, obviously still a lot in front of you, but what was the, the mental adversity that you faced when you were going to those close calls? Yeah, I think, you know, the first time getting second was tough. That was a hard pill to swallow because that was the Olympic year too. Um, that was after COVID and how, um, you know, all that stuff kind of happened. And so first time I, I was very, very close. Um, things just kind of didn't go how they were planned. Like the final just kind of fell apart for me um and that's the unfortunate thing about diving is some days you're going to be on fire you're going to be hitting your dives left and right and some days it's just not going to be clicking and so i think it was just really figuring out what what i needed to do to be in the right mindset at the right time and i think um this time around i tried to put less pressure on myself you know i had won an olympic medal this time around and so there was just less pressure. And I think knowing it was my last event um, collegiately, I really just wanted to enjoy the last competition that I had for Arizona. And I think um, going in with the mindset of, I just want to make the little Delaney proud. I just want to make the little girl proud and just enjoy it, enjoy the moment. And I think that was really like, honestly, the secret to it. <laughs> A few years ago, obviously the pandemic, and then you go to the Olympics and then now national championship. How would you... I guess, define or summarize your college career? I mean, it's been a whirlwind. I think just looking back at who I was my freshman year and just like seeing the growth that I've had um, is pretty incredible. I mean, you know, I've not a lot of athletes can say they've been around for six years and to be able to say that I've gotten to represent Arizona for six years, like that's honestly a pretty special feeling. Um, it's sad to know that it's coming to an end. Um, but I'm really excited to see um, what the future holds for me. Going back to making a little Delaney crowd, what have been some moments that you have felt 
really trailed with success and what are some moments that yeah have felt like man this is hard transitioning from gymnastics to to diving yeah i think um it actually kind of goes back to my freshman year it was a really challenging year you know we had lost coaches um so i have multiple coaches that i i had lost and i was really just not enjoying the sport anymore and so um I was honestly to the point where I was like, I don't really know if I want to go to the Olympics anymore. Like, I'm just going to dive through college and then that'll be that. And um, when I got my new coach, Dwight, um, he kind of I think he knew I was kind of just in this like, you know, I'm doing it because it's kind of helping fund my education. But at the same time, like, I think he knew I wasn't fully enjoying it. And so um just at one point he kind of sat me down and told me, you know, like, you just have to remember like who you, why you're doing this in the first place, like what your purpose is. And just like, at some point, like you have to forget about all the trophies and all the, you know, the awards and all that stuff and just die for the little girl that started in the first place. And so like, that was like a big moment for me just cause it's like, no one ever really told me that before. Like I've always had coaches who were so wrapped up in the results and he was more wrapped up in me being a better person, like me enjoying enjoying myself and having fun. And I think that was just like a pivotal moment for me um, to really appreciate why I'm diving. The uh, next step for you career-wise? Um, so I'm actually going to be sticking around to train for 2024. So that's the next big goal. When does that trial process begin? Um, actually, it pretty much starts this summer. So <laughs> we're, you know, week off and then right back into it because we have world qualifications in May. Um, and then there at Worlds, we have to qualify Olympic spots for the country. So that qualification process starts literally in July. And then next summer will be Olympic trials. Howard, are you planning for your wedding right now as well? <laughs> Do you have a date set? No. So he's in the military. So um, he there's chances he'll be deployed. And so um, we're kind of just waiting until we're no longer doing distance because he's stationed elsewhere right now. And so we're just trying to get through this, you know, I'm in grad school, um, training for the Olympics. I think that'd just be too much to plan right now. <laughs> so we're just kind of taking it slow and waiting for the right time. What were you studying in, in grad school? Um, so I'm in the speech language pathology program. So I'm studying to be a speech speech therapist. Yeah. What led you down that path? Um, so I originally wanted to do occupational therapy, but they don't have a program here. And so that was actually one of the good things that came out of COVID was that I realized I had an extra year of eligibility with the COVID year coming back. And so I needed to look at potential graduate programs and I started exploring like, what could I do to have that extra year of eligibility? And I came across speech, which is funny because it's very like similar to OT. I mean, you work with a lot of OTs. Um, and I actually grew up around speech therapists because my mom is a special education teacher. And so I grew up seeing a lot of that happen and so I'm just like why did I never look at this before so it kind of fell into my lap and I guess you know some good things did come out of COVID. <laughs> so when you look at your individual career it seems like you could check everything off a checklist so what at, now as you enter the next chapter what's on the checklist for you what are goals? Yeah so um, now it's all national and international goals and so um, you know I've won an Olympic silver medal but individually I was fifth so I was right there I was super close to winning a medal um, in individual at the, the Tokyo Games so I think the next big goal is hopefully to get on the podium in 2024. Someone you looked up to throughout your career? Um, I really looked up to um, Laura Wilkinson because she is you know the last Olympic gold medalist in my event and so just I would love to be her one day just to be able to stand on top of the podium one day. Any more questions? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.